Yo, guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video at over on Ark Survival Ascended. And I'm going to show you the tech class or the tech tier of items inside of Ark. This is all end game stuff. And I'm going to show you how to get it, what you need to do with it, and some very valuable tips that a lot of people actually misuse the tech tier. I'm going to kind of try and clarify all of that stuff for you. Now, if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for that algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. So anyways, what is the tech tier? So right off the bat, essentially in order to find the tech tier, you can go into your engram points and there's a button that literally says tech grams. Now, tech grams is gonna open up all these lovely things for you. And these are all end game things that you can gather by unlocking each of the bosses. Now, all right, let's back up a second here. Before we even get into describing that, all of this stuff is essentially meant to do something very specific. There are some really awesome things like being able to clone some of your dinos, store almost unlimited resources, feed things and refrigerate them at the same time, have a force field around your base, or even transmit to other arcs. Now this one's less useful until they actually release the update for it, but there's some really cool stuff. Now in order to get that, you've essentially got to beat the three bosses of arc. Now, in order to beat the three bosses of Ark, you're going to go ahead and notice over there on Red Ob that if you go into the inventory of Red Ob, you will be able to access a portal. That portal will take you to beat the dragon. If you go to Green Ob, it'll take you to beat the Broodmother. And if you go to Blue Ob, which is way off in the distance over there, you'll be able to beat the Megapithecus. Now, each of those bosses has three levels. They have Gamma, they have Beta, and they have Alpha. Alpha is the most challenging, but it will re reward you with the most overall both element, which you need in order to actually run all the tech structures, and that will reward you with the most tech grams. Now, tech grams, like I talked about earlier, are things that you unlock. Now, to unlock these, you must beat the bosses on all difficulties. However, if you beat them on alpha, you will also unlock beta and gamma tech grams, whereas if you beat them on gamma, you will not unlock the beta or alpha levels until you beat them. But anything you unlock, the levels beneath it will be given to you as well. So you want to try and beat them on alpha if possible. Now, that is what you do in order to actually get the tech grams. So each one is valuable. There's not like a boss that has more valuable engrams. They've all got something super valuable. However, they will all on gamma or any rating will give you the tech replicator, which is a very important structure. But before we get into that, so what is the value of this tech stuff, right? Because I've been talking about it for a few seconds now, and you can see that I can place it down, and it's actually pretty unique for each individual structure. For example, the foundations, like you can see right here, have the highest health and damage resistance in the entire game when it comes to structures. Now, there are ways to counter this, but they do have some of the highest health and highest structures. They also provide you with a little bit of a hypothermic boost, which is pretty nice and all of the structures will provide you with all of that stuff. Now, also, there are structures that are going to actually give you brand new things that you can do inside of Ark. That can be anything from the replicator to the teleporter to the transmitter, and I'll show you all of that right now. So essentially, there's a large list of things that you can use. One of the most, I guess, favored things by people inside of Ark is the teleporter. Now, the teleporter is essentially a small, medium or large pad they will get, uh, you can see that I've got a medium and a large one. The large one is gargantuan in size, but it'll be able to allow you to teleport your large size dinos, like your Giganotosauruses, T-Rexes, and all of that stuff without any problems at all. It'll basically instantaneously teleport you to any connected small tech teleporter. So I don't have any available right here, but I can easily put a second tech teleporter down. Let's go ahead and put one right there in order to teleport to it. And it'll show up on your list and you can literally travel to it instantaneously. And it'll be an instant travel anywhere on the map for your character. So it gives you a basically, um, and not even making this up, you can get across from one side of the map to the other in zero seconds, just by having access to the teleporters. Now, though that opens up a whole new thing, there are other very useful things when it comes to the tech stuff. So you can see that I'm wearing the tech suit. I'll explain the tech suit in another video because there's so many unique things about the tech suit that it would take at least 20 minutes to describe, but they all give you special abilities. Anything from being able to see hot creatures and highlights to fly like you saw me doing earlier to land without taking damage. You can see this one will allow me to boost and punch. This one's going to give me an, an, an a There's a lot of abilities. That's the point behind that. But before we get into that, there's also saddles, right? So anytime you see a saddle, whenever it's a tech saddle or for a Mosasaurus or Rex or anything, 
you can essentially place down a saddle and those saddles are going to give your dino special abilities. So you can see that I can toss this down. It gives you some super cool armor on it. Instead of just being a saddle, it gives you like this metal armor on it. And you can actually customize and use this thing in order to actually give you some special abilities. You open up the menu in order to basically shoot with your dino like it's got giant cannons on its head. Um, you can toss some element in it and it will actually shoot. You can see me just like a tech turret would, right? Pretty unique. It basically turns it into a end game kind of crazy destroyer of worlds concept. Pretty neat. And there are a bunch of different saddles. You can get one for the Mosasaur, the Shark, the Tapa Yara or Tapa Jara, whatever you want to call it. And then the Rex as well. And each one of those is going to give you that ability to shoot as well as some pretty decent armor reduction compared to a primitive saddle. Now, also other valuable features you want to know about in order to make anything in the entire tech class, you're going to need access to a tech replicator. Now, the tech replicator, like I said earlier, is unlockable by any boss on alpha, gamma, beta or uh, I guess no alpha, gamma, beta. And you can turn it on simply by having a tech generator nearby. And it used to use element and it no longer does because it just runs off of that tech generator being nearby. So that's a huge quality of life thing that they added into the game. And that's a uh, very useful thing that they've added, but it will essentially craft anything that you want. And it also opens up the ability to, I'll talk about this in a second, the pulling category, but it crafts at a much higher speed than any other year crafters. So your anything that you can imagine can be crafted in this, just like you can see here, I can click on it, polymer, or polymer electronics, radios, armors, miscellaneous. You can see all of it can be crafted inside of this guy. It does it much faster and it can hold quite a few more slots. Notice 600 slots versus the, I believe it's like 50-ish in a smithy or something like that. So it holds a lot more slots. It makes a lot of noise. It's very big, but it is very, very useful. Endgame tribes pretty much exclusively use these for their buildings. So that is the replicator. It replaces pretty much your smithy, your fabricator, anything you want. Um, the next things that you're going to want to focus on, especially as soon as you unlock this, are your tech dedicated storage. Now, if you haven't seen what happens with a tech dedicated storage, what happens is you essentially can place anything inside of a tech dedicated storage that is a structure. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you that because I was able to place down a small tech teleporter storage. Essentially, I can go inside of this guy right here and I can actually open this thing and store as many of that one as I want inside of it. Now, you can store millions of resources in these things so you can load them up and it's much better because it doesn't break as easy as a box or it doesn't have as few slots as a vault it's got the highest storage in the game and it will only store one resource so you need to make a whole bunch of these you could have one for uh, stone wood thatch and just make this giant base of these dedicated storage now why would you build this because it does it look just pretty no so it actually opens up the ability for you to use something called wireless crafting so you can essentially pull things into your inventory. So if I wanted to make a cryopod and I wanted to craft one, I could hit the button in order to wirelessly transfer something to this. And using the dedicated storage, I'm going to be able to transfer the resources into this without me having to pick a single thing. It's going to automatically do the exact right amount. Obviously a super awesome end game feature. Pretty neat, right? That's another one of those new things that was added this time around. Oh, so, again, pretty useful. Now, Let's keep going down the list because I'm not going to spend too much time on any one thing. There's also the tech cloning chamber. Now, this is a massive structure, by the way. You can see that the size of this thing is just insane. What it allows you to do is for the cost of element shards, you can clone any dinosaur in the entire game that you have. Now, that dinosaur will also then be breedable. So if you have something that's been neutered or something like that, you can basically undo that by having the ability to place this down. Very expensive to do it in uh, shards. But it is a very useful uh, feature because you can actually co clone something that's super powerful or clone something that you want to breed. Or just if you're playing more of a solo or PvE server, you can actually clone a dino that you like. So you have multiple copies of it. A super useful structure. And after that one, we've got something like the tech force field, which can be placed on any structure. Just like you see right here, it does need its own power source, so it will need element. And this thing will be able to create a giant bubble if you want it to be a giant bubble and uh, you can control how big this radius is. So if I was to make this radius, essentially what's gonna happen is this thing's gonna make a bubble that nothing can get inside or outside of. It looks like it's like bugging out right now, so I can't actually see it, but it is there, I swear. Um, decrease to minimum radius, what about maximum? 
well, I can't see it, but basically it creates a giant bubble that enemies can't get in unless they actually destroy the giant bubble. I don't know why it's not working right now, but it does work. So the tech force field is a super useful thing. Now, after we go on that, let's go a little further down. The tech generator, if you haven't, you know, I kind of basically talked about the tech generator. The tech generator will essentially power everything in your base and it will work about twice as far, if not a little bit further than that, than regular generators. So it'll power a lot more stuff over range and it, let's go ahead and show you how long one element lasts. One element, just so you can see, is gonna last you about eight hours. I've been running this one for a little while and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. So it's got a huge range and it'll power pretty much everything in your entire base without any gas need or element need. It's a very valuable thing that you uh, definitely wanna pick up and see pretty useful. Now, after that, the, we'll get into the basic structure class here, right? So the basic structures, things like Tektros or Tektroth, whatever you want to call it, right? This is something that you can place your food inside of at 100 slots, and it also refrigerates it. So a lot of problems with actually feeding your babies inside a park is your food spoiling. Because this functions as a refrigerator, as well as a pro or trough, whatever you want to call it, it's actually going to provide you with your resources at a much better keep rate so you're not losing thousands of spoiled meat or thousands of berries to the actual spoil timers the uh this is one of the most beneficial things end game it's almost like having a ton of these is not even an option you just have to now moving into more of the structure based things you can obviously see it if you haven't seen some of my videos about the tech turrets the tech turrets are an awesome thing they do the most damage out of any turret inside of the game Plus they have splash damage, plus they can stack element at a much higher rate of a thousand. So 5,000 shots, pretty freaking crazy that you can actually get access to these. Um, they are super useful and very hard to counter, especially when you combine them with some heavy turrets. Now, after that, we'll move into the next useful category, the actual structures, right? So we're moving into the gateways and the large gateways at this point in time. Another awesome change that they made a quality of life thing from Arc is that these things now have a completely controllable automatic close and open feature. Now they can be blocked by, uh, what's it called? There we go. By structures and resources in the way. So just be mindful of that. But anytime you get up, they will automatically open. They will automatically close for you. Now you can also adjust all of these automatic at open and close. And they've got some new features like and only. So if you have an admin only room in your base, that is a very useful thing to be able to have access to. The stay open setting, you can actually change it to be something like you want. You, for the auto close, you have the exact time it takes to auto close. I would suggest 0.5 seconds, but some people like to change it around because you don't want people to follow you into your base. But it's a super useful feature to be able to have access to this. And it looks really cool. Let's be honest, it's a pretty neat thing. So all of that structure, and just like every other structure in the game, you can have walls, foundations, ceilings, doors, all of that stuff. And it just basically allows you to have behemoth cellar doors and stuff like that to actually give you a very functional and funky looking. You can see this right here, right? I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're going to go ahead and close. You can see that on top of this, it's a much higher overall structure limit. So I mean, not structure limit. It's a much higher overall damage. Uh, counter and you can do some pretty cool things like go invisible on it and then make it go visible again um, and it's a nice little thing to just be able to use if you want to go in and out of a base it's just a fun thing now another feature that gets unlocked by tech is actually being able to use what's called moon pools and underwater structures you can see that i'm going closer to it right now basically this is going to let you have a underwater base and it's a super cool thing that you can do you can pick it up you can unlock all connected um, I'm actually going to just go ahead and unlock all connected and, boop, and then you can open the portholes and you can literally have access to air inside of the water. I think it'd be really cool if they did the inverse of this. So you have water on top of the land, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, you can build these giant and you can structure a whole bunch of those together making a massive underwater base. Now that's pretty much it for the saddles and all the main structures they do. I talked about the tech suit and there are a few weapons as well. People commonly forget about the tech grenade. The tech grenade is a weapon that's essentially going to be thrown, creates an anti-gravity field, so anything nearby will get tossed into it and then blasted away. Just so I can show you what I mean by that. Six to a target and powerful tech explosion afterwards. Actually, they got rid of the gravity grenades. Nice. Um, so this one is actually just a explosion that can be done to nearby creatures. So let's go ahead and pop that guy down there. Let's see if I can hit these guys with... So 84 damage. 
And you can see not too great, but it is what it is. 225 on that guy. And we can go ahead and just stick these things to a whole bunch of creatures. 289, so nothing super great, but that explosive damage will do damage to players nearby. So just be aware of that. It can be uh, useful for that purpose. Now, it also unlocks the tech rifle. Where is it? All right, there it is. So the primitive tech rifle is one of the most useful things for raiding in the entire game because it does damage to all structures at a very nice rate. I'll go ahead and shoot that, and you can see that that's 200 damage per shot not too shabby and this thing can be used on the top of a stego so a lot of people will raid your base just by walking at you with a tech rifle and a stego it is a very dangerous thing but it's very very useful to have access to so anyway sorry to cough right there but that is all the structures you can also at the very end of the game once you've unlocked all the alphas alpha ascension will give you access to the tech binoculars and the tech binoculars are essentially new <clears throat> inside of this game. And they are going to give you access to creature readouts. So if I was to hover over a creature, I could get a full point breakdown of what stats that creature has and all of the valuable things, colors, um, whether it's got mutations, um, the specific mutations, as well as the levels. It's a very useful thing to have access to for those tech binoculars, but beating alpha is a difficult thing to do when you're doing the actual end game ascension, but it's a pretty cool thing and pretty fun overall. So all of this is something that is essentially going to, and again, I didn't talk about everything individually, but all of it is going to add super unique content to the end of your game. So beating the bosses should be one of your main goals inside of arc, but getting access to these really awesome structures and abilities is what one of your biggest goals in arc should be and there's a lot of new things and small adjustments that were made inside of arc survival ascended so definitely be aware of that because obviously things like wireless crafting or the generator being power or being able to power just about everything in your base these are nice changes that have been made even including the binoculars which have been obviously super awesome but the tech got reworked and these structures are super valuable so hopefully this video helps you out and if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for that algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. All right, teach.